Okay, shalom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Uh, tonight is going to be on the Parsha mostly, but it's also considered part two of Mesilat Yeshayim. This week's Parsha is Parashat Vayakel Pekude. So it's a double Parsha. And uh, being a rabbi almost 12 years, I've gotten a very, very important question that... Um, I have myself also. God forbid, we don't want to say the Torah is boring. But, you know, we have Yigal, he's a Baal Kore, a very good one. My dear student is here with me. And uh, the question is, Rabbi, why, why does the Torah need to devote five parshas talking about the same subject? about building the original temple. This is Solomon's temple here. But the Torah talks about building the Mishkan, right? Where the Kohen Gadol serves. My goodness, we had Terumah, Tetzaveh. Even last week's parasha talks about it, most half of it. Kitisa. Then again, two more parshas, Vayakel Pekudeh, and... Uh, I must confess, I've done a survey in my own mind where this week's parsha, I hopefully my prophecy won't come true, but I don't know. Pay attention. This week's parsha, a lot of people start talking in the, in the middle of the Torah because we really have to ask ourselves, even the Ten Commandments, which I have a class on that, and Baruch Hashem, we got a lot of views. Why is the, why we really have to ask ourselves this question? Why is the Torah devoting five, not one, not two, not three, five parshas to talk about what building the temple? So there's a very very fundamental and relevant answer to this. Every single one of us should be ans asking this question, and the answer is a very very important stepping stone on how to get closer to God. See, you know, in Parshat Terumah, like it says up here, Vasuli Mikdash v'shachanti v'tocham. The Torah says, make for me a temple, so I should dwell amongst them. So the Al Sheikh, the great, great Torah commentator, a friend of the Arizal and the friend of the Bet Yosef says, what is the Torah saying? My goodness. You should build for me a temple, right? It's a house of God. So the Shekhinah, the presence of God, should come in what? Inside that temple. Betocho. But what does the Torah say? Beto Cham. What does Beto Cham mean? Make for me a temple so I should dwell amongst them. So the Al Sheikh says that you have to know. The ultimate temple is not here. Of course, we have to have the utmost reverence and respect for the, uh, in the time of Moses, the Mishkan, and nowadays we're not even allowed to go up here, you know that, because we're Tameh. But, let's be honest, as a rabbi, how many hours a day do people come, even those people that are so devoted and religious, and they saw my YouTube videos about how important it is to uh, pray with the minyan. Honestly, how many times, how many hours a day are we in the, in the synagogue? Or in the, even in the Bed Midrash, unless you're in yeshiva? Maybe an hour or two, maximum? How about the other 22 hours of the day? The ultimate temple is in our minds, and in our hearts. So therefore, this is the answer to the question. Why does the Torah repeat for five parashas, Terumah, Tetzaveh, Kitisava, Yakel, Pekudeh, we're lucky this year, we get a double header, or else if it was a uh, double adder, we would have had to go five weeks in a row. But in a way we're unlucky, because the Torah is teaching us this. This temple is just a symbol, Right? The ultimate temple is where? In our body. We have, and the Torah is teaching us 
Don't think Jeru Jerusalem was built overnight. We live in a society now nowadays, and this is why there's so much divorce. I heard from a very, very great, great, great psychologist and rabbi. He says one of the reasons why there's so much divorce is because, look, we have instant messaging, instant microwave, you know? Everything we have is disposable, you know? Um, people get frustrated when uh, their uh, internet connection isn't at the maximum, maximum seat. We want everything right now, right this second. But the truth of the matter is, God is telling us to build this temple, it takes at least five parshas. It takes five. See, the Zohar says a very important idea. To sin, to do the most despicable and... Do you need any meditation or preparation to sin? You don't need to go say, L'Shem Yichud, to prepare. See, that's the unfortunate reality. When we get away from God, the, the low road, the road that is not the right way to take, when we take the wrong U-turn or the right curve, it's so easy to sin, you don't, but, but honestly, let's ask ourselves a question. If the ultimate temple is in ourselves, right, in our hearts and in our minds, how difficult it is to pray three times a day, shacharit min charvit, with the proper kavanah. It says that the original Hasidim, right, the Gemara, the beginning of the fifth parak of Berachot, it would take them one hour to meditate and one hour after to get to the proper what? Devotion. So this is one reason that we, we, we have to understand Christianity is total baloney. They say, oh, you just need to believe in cheese and crackers, Yeshu, and you have salvation. But what the Torah is teaching us, devoting five different parshas about the temple, the Torah is taking, telling it's a high, the highway to heaven requires a lot, a lot of toiling, a lot of self-control, and it takes a lifetime to become a true Sadiq and a true Chacham, you understand? And like I was saying, why is there so much divorce in today's society? Because people don't have patience. People think that just like in uh, instant mesh messaging, or you, you just throw noodles when you're in college, right? You throw food into the microwave, it's ready in five minutes. A marriage can be just, you know, you need to build love. And if you need to build love between a husband and a wife, for sure, to build love with your Creator, because the ultimate, the Zohar says, the ultimate, 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 ultimate goal of all the Torah we learn and all the mitzvot is, you know what? Bedechil urechim. To love God and fear God. To be so Only the people that are attached to God with all the temple, the presence of God is attached to them in their hearts and in their minds. Those people are truly alive. You see a lot of people, they seem alive, right? They do bungee jumping, they do skydiving. Those people are not alive. Those people are actually trying to... They feel so dead inside that they have to do something that almost brings them to death to feel what? But the true person that's alive is what? The true person that's alive is somebody that has a true love of God and is attached to God in his mind. So that's what the Zohar says. To do a sin... It's very easy, you don't need preparation. But to do a mitzvah, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of, you have to shut out all the, te you have to first of all turn off your phone, right? You want to connect with God, you need to turn off your phone. That's why Shabbat is so important. We really turn off all what? The physical. The ultimate day to connect to your Creator is what? The ultimate day to create, connect to your Creator is what? Shabbat. So, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai teaches us to build our relationship with God is a very difficult and long, long journey. It's a long road ahead of us. That's why um, I just wanted to tell you that we know that on Thursday nights we try to do Mesilat Yesharim. We haven't done it for a while, but 
You know, the Ramchal, one of the greatest, greatest rabbis that really made it practical, the science of Kabbalah, of the Arizal, says that he wrote a book, How to Get to Spiritual Perfection. And how many steps does it have? It says, first of all, you have to know what your mission is in life, right? Why were you created? Then the second step is Zehirut, to be careful, to keep not transgress any of the negative commandments of the Torah. Then the next step is Zerizut, to be swift and have to realize how important and what a golden opportunity is to do a mitzvah, to be so swift like you're running to win the lottery, like you're running to uh, get the best job of your life, right? Like, you know, if you have an interview for becoming the top lawyer in town, are you going to be late for that? No. So, Zerizut is to understand how valuable the mitzvot are and to run towards them. Then you have to do Nekiut, to be pure, then Perishut, then Tahara, then Chasidut, and then at the end of this ladder is Anava, humility. True humility takes a lot of work. After that, that leads you to Yirat Chet. After that, the, the Ramchal, it t- takes you to Kedusha. Holiness, and after Kedusha, you could get to the Madrega of Ruach HaKodesh. That you become so close to God that you kind of, you're so in tune with holiness and spirituality, you get the sixth sense of knowing the future and God reveals. So, I just wanted to say one story that happened with one of my friends to illustrate this idea. And then we're going to do a short halacha because we want to, I want to connect the halacha to this week's parsha. And we'll be done. You know the sef, the book, Mesilat Yesharim, that we're learning together, that I just read to you, the 15 steps, is not such a thick book. So one of the greatest, greatest Torah scholars that was a, the, probably the greatest expert on Musar, ethics, in, the, in our generation, which he unfortunately just passed away eight, nine years ago, was Rav Shlomo Volbe. He wrote Alei Shor. Anybody in yeshiva, I recommend that for the B'nai Torah, Alei Shor. Aleshur. So one of uh, the people, I was learning in Yeshivat Mir. This is like 17 years ago. So somebody went to Rav Shlomo Volbe Zatzal, the great, great Baal Musar, and he said, Rebbe, I've done the Mesilad Yesharim. I've studied it. You know, in the Yeshiva, the longest semester is the winter semester. So for like a month, or, you know, a month and a half, he was studying the Mesilad Yesharim. And he said, listen, I went through it very slowly and every page. What does the Rebbe think I should do? Do you think I should start another book? Or, I don't know. I mean, it didn't really affect me that much. Rav Shlomo Volbe told him an amazing thing. He said, I personally learned it 40 times. On the 41st time, it started having an effect of actually changing my day-to-day actions. And the Ramchal really writes that. So... That's what the Torah is saying. This temple is a precious temple. Like a lawyer or doctor or a rabbi. Can you get to that wisdom overnight? Same thing. God is saying, this temple that you have to build in your mind and in your soul, it takes what? It takes... Since it's such a meaningful temple... It's going to take a very, very long time. And thank God, you know, the greatest blessing is health. If we're blessed with health, and nowadays, I just, my kids got me to get Google Express. You don't even know, need to go to the uh, market anymore here in L.A. As long as you don't have it. So Baruch Hashem, it's a double-edged sword. Technology gives us more time. And if we use that time appropriately, we have to know one thing. There's a doctor, he's a very, very good doctor. He's a rabbi also, Rabbi Dr. Fox. I heard he had told a, a group. He, he says that we should make all of our children plant a tree. See, look at nature. A child, a mother has to have the baby for nine months. Nine months of pain and 
and taking it, then it gives birth. Look at fruit trees. In a few weeks, right, you said we need to do the laws, right? Look how gracious God is to us. Not only does He give us fruit trees which have mangoes and pomegranates, which are such luscious and fabulous, all of the colors of the rainbow you can find in different fruits. Not only does He do that, but He gives us flowers. Like right now, my neighbor has a tree, it's an orange tree. The, the smell is the smell of Gan Eden. So look how much God loves us. Not only does He give us trees, but He gives us flowers, which in a few days we have to make a blessing, right? Birkat Ilanot. That we have to say, Baruch Hashem, We thank God for building such a beautiful world, right? When we go out in the month of Nisan, which is in a few days, when we see beautiful flowering of fruit trees, we have to thank you, God. You have left nothing deficient for us in this world. And you have created a beautiful creation. But I want to ask you something. When you plant a tree, does it give fruits overnight? When a woman becomes pregnant, does she give birth overnight? Look at nature. Nature is teaching us that to build something, it takes a very, very long time. You know, you plant a tree maybe in five, ten years. You know, there's some trees, pistachio trees. You know, it, it takes a long time for the tree to what become? Mature. Us human beings. Not until 20 does our brain totally develop. So this should be a sign to us never to give up in life. If we try to become a great tzaddik, right? We try to work on ourselves. And it doesn't happen overnight. We have to be patient. To build this temple, to build this holy temple in our heart and in our minds, it's going to be extremely, extremely difficult. If to build the twin towers, they haven't built it yet, right? Because look, every day at the end of prayer we say, Talmidei Chachamim Marvim Shalom Ba'olam. Shene'emar v'chol banayich limudei Hashem v'rav shalom banayich. Al tikre banayich ela bonayich. Every day, part of our prayer at the end, and it's such an important lesson, it says that the Torah scholars, they increase peace in the world. Why? Because it says, if all your children learn Torah, you're going to have a lot of peace. So it says, Al tikre banayich. Don't, the true meaning, the deeper meaning of the, the Pasuk is, it doesn't mean the, your children, it means the builders. Who are the builders? The Gemara Shabbat Dav Kuf. The ultimate builder is the Talmud Chacham, the Torah scholar. See, when you want to bring God into your mind and heart, it's going to be extremely difficult. Don't think it's going to happen overnight. But is it a worthwhile mission? Is it, it, is, is it a worth, worthwhile endeavor? Yes. You know why? Because when you build your character and you make your neshama super strong, that it's worthy of the heavenly presence of the Shekhinah, the energy and the spirit, the holiness of God to come inside of you, this is a building that will last forever. You understand? That's why Rabbi Yisrael Salantar said, he said it's easier to learn Shas to, to change one bad character. Some people are lazy, some people are um, Ba'ale Ta'ava, they have no self-control, either sexually or eating, or some people are very egotistic, self-centered, full of vanity. But we have to know, this mission that God gave us, that's why He gives us a long life. He gives us 80, 90 years. When we build our character, when we build up our neshama to be worthy of the Holy Shekhinah to come inside our mind and our heart, it's the ultimate, ultimate structure. And that will reflect where we sit in the heavenly kingdom of God after 120 years. So may Hashem help us to realize to become a truly, truly spiritual and heavenly Ben Olam Haba. It's going to be a very, very long and hard road. Look at the Ben Ishchai, how he explains the Gemara in Eruvin. Rabbi Yoshua said that uh, only three people were able to outwit me. Because there's a long road and there's the easy instant gratification road. 
But rich road will bring you true happiness and meaning in life. It's worthwhile, my brothers and sisters, to devote the time to learn Torah, to learn Musar, to do self-control, to do self-improvement. And I'm sure, since we already have a neshama, we have a soul, is a spark of God, if we open up a little bit, you know what it says, God says, open for me like the tip of a needle, and I'll open for you holiness and spirituality and Torah, like the opening of a big, 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 Temple, ulam, like a big room. So may Hashem help us that we have to be extremely patient and realize this temple that we build is going to take a very long time. But that's why we have a fulfilling and meaningful life. Amen. Just to do a halacha also on this week's parasha. You know, this week's parasha, it says, Vayakel Moshe, Moshe gets donations. by Vayikhu. Again, in this week's parasha, it says that um, Moshe got a lot of uh, gold, silver, and very, very beautiful um, materials to build this holy temple. Not this one, but the original one, the Mishkan. So I wanted to do a little bit, if the Torah is talking about so much about the mitzvah of um, donation that the people should come give, I just wanted to do, I want to ask you a fascinating question, my audience. How many positive commandments does the Torah have? Right? We have 613 commandments in the Torah. Right? 6, 1, 3. 613 commandments. How many of them are, are negative? 365. How many of them are positive? 248. So we have 248. Now, out of all those mitzvahs, which one do you think we have to be the most careful and meticulous to do in the most expert, perfect, and carry out in the best way? Which one do you think it is? So, out of 248 commandments, positive commandments, right? Which one of these mitzvot do we have to be super, super careful and meticulous and really do it in the most, carry it out in the most beautiful and expert and professional with the most care. So look at a Rambam. I beg you, anybody that owns a Rambam, please look it up. This Rambam is in the Mishneh Torah. In this uh, Shapsi Frankel, it's Chelek Dalit. It's in Zera'im which is the second part. There's Hafla'an Zera'im. Chapter 10, Hilchot Matnot Ani'im. It's the first halacha in chapter Perek Asiri. For those people that are the B'nai Torah, they can look it up. Look at the, look at the Rambam. It says, Chayavin ana anu leizar ve mitzvot sedaga yoter mikol mitzvot ase sheva Torah. Wow! The Rambam says very clearly, we are demanded, chayavin, we must be careful to carry out the mitzvah of tzedakah, charity, than all the other commandments. I would have thought, maybe Shabbat, maybe tefillin, maybe, I don't know, honoring your parents. It says, the, look at a Rambam, and there, we have nobody expert in Judaism greater than the Rambam, the last thousand, right? He's the great lion, the great eagle, Nesher Hagadol, the great philosopher, doctor, the person that was able to summarize in such a golden tongue. And look at the Rambam. He says, Chayavin anu leizal ve mitzvat tzedakah yoter mikol mitzvot asher Torah. She has said, why? Out of all the 248 commandments, positive commandments, What's the one you have to be a superstar in and carry out in the most meticulous and particular and perfect way? The one that you have to be the most careful about is tzedakah. Why? Siman le Because this is why God picked Abraham. 
God didn't prick Abraham. The reason why God loved Abraham, right? Habibullah. Why God loved Abraham. Zera, right? The, the prophet Yeshaya says Abraham is what? Habib. He's, he's the beloved of God. Because in the Torah it says, Ki yadativ leman asher The Torah says, the, the Torah answers this question. Have you ever thought about it? There was many, many other great prophets in the Bible, in the Torah. Predecessors to Abraham. There was Noah that saved the entire world, right? He was the only loyal servant of God that was worthy of coming into what? There was Hanoch, there was Shem and Ever, but only God found a diamond in the rough. Only one diamond was deserving. And who was that? Abraham. Why? Because God knew Abraham was a master pedagogue. You know what he was? There's a lot of righteous people, they're very self into themselves. But Abraham realized that only every, every good habit he had, he would instill it. He would energize his children with that mission. So God says, the reason why I pick Abraham is, I, I know Abraham is the all-star, the awesome, amazing, fabulous caretaker, right? Abraham had four doors in his tent. And he loved people. He did such loving kindness, right? He's probably the most amazing Baal Chesed, right? Loving kindness, kind person in the world. But Abraham Avinu taught Ishmael, all of the Arabs, all the Semites, all the Jews, that this is what God worship is, right? God worship is to be selfless rather than what? Self, selfish. And going back to my first part of my Dvar Torah, how do we build a temple in ourselves? When we're humble, when we're not selfish, we're selfless, right? When we care about others. And look at this. Look at this Rambam. And kise Yisrael zera Avraham avinu vedat ha'emet omedet ala bistaka. He says the whole Judaism and the, the true, the only true religion is only on the pillar of what? Sedaka. Wow. These are very powerful words. I would love for you to see it inside. And kisei yisrael mitkonen vedat ha'amet el vistaka shenema vistaka tekonanti. Tekoneni. He says, God says the world is, is uh, on the pillar, on the foundation of sedaka. Ve'en yisrael nigalin el vizkuev. Ultimately, the key to Mashiach, the key to not see that there should be any ISIS or Hezbollah or Hamas, or nuclear Iran. We obviously can't trust the Obama administration. If we do kindness, give money, not make money a God, right? Some people, instead of worshiping God in the temple here, they think God, money, money is a gift from God. That you, if you have more than you need, you need to what? Give it away. Help people in need. Build the modern temple. Our modern temples are this place that we're sitting in now. The yeshivot, the kolels, the bate midrashot that teach Torah. How do we know that Mashiach will only come in the honor of staka? Shene'emar, Sion be mishpat tifadeh v'shavea b'staka. It's the haftorah of Parshat. That we read on Chodesh Av, right? The, the, the great prophet Yeshaya, Isaiah, tells us that Sion, Zion will be redeemed with what? Sedaka. So wow, amazing Ramba. So I just wanted to point out a very interesting halacha from the Shulchan Aruch and the Rambam and how the Chafetz Chaim understands it and we'll call it a night. So we see that the Rambam says, out of all the 248 different mitzvot of the Torah, what's the one that we have to be super, super careful, right? To do in the best way? Sedaka, 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 charity. And it's terrible. I see, you know, being a CPA and being in the real estate and knowing, you know, you kind of could shots up people's net value. You could guesstimate. And it really, it, it hurts my heart that I don't know, maybe they, 
people do their kindness in such a secret way, but we Jews, the Rambam brings out, and the Rav Yosef Karo says this. One of the most interesting laws of tzedakah is how much should you give? So most people think that it's only what? 10%, ma'aser. But actually we learn from Yaakov Avinu, the Rambam also brings it. Look at the Rambam right here in these halachot, matrat aneim. Maran, Rabbi Yosef Kara also holds like the Rambam. Look what he says in Perek Shevi'i, chapter 7, halacha hey. You know that the ultimate, there's, you know that 10 and 20% is really not so relevant. If you want to do the mitzvah in the most amazing way, which is really not so practical, unfortunately, is that if the person is in, in a very terrible suffering, you should take him out and bring him to his um, a situation where he's comfortable. So, but our rabbi said that what? You want, if you want to give half of your money away to everybody, you're, not, you're going to put yourself in danger. So, Kama, how much should you give? A lot of people don't know this. When Yaakov was running away from Esav, he said, He made a nether, right? He said, God, if you give me back, bring me back safely to Isaac and Rebekah, Yitzchak and Rivka, I'm going to give you what? Aser ta aser. The Gemara in Ketubot, and the Rambam holds like this, says to do the mitzvah of tzedakah in the most perfect way is not 10%, it's 20%. So mitzvah, a lot of people don't know this. Uh, to do the mitzvah of tzedakah is 20%. Now the Chavitz Chaim, in his, he has a beautiful, beautiful work about tzedakah. And I really recommend it, anybody that can learn it. Ahavat Chesed, maybe we're going to do a few classes on that Blin Eder. But then he's, the Chavetz Chaim says there, what's the idea of giving 20%? So he says a beautiful idea, which I love so much. The Chida also brings it, actually. You know, after Rabbi Yosef Karo, the most important halachic authority for us Sephardic Jews is Maran HaChida. Some people say the same way that we accept it. All the laws of Rabbi Yosef Karo, we also accepted all the laws of uh, Rabbeinu Chaim Yosef David Azulai, Maran Achida. So the Chavetz Chaim and both the Chida write, what's the idea of 20%? He says, just like you know, we're going to read in the Torah soon that there's Maaser Ani and the Kohanim, right? We have to give many, give many gifts to the Kohanim and the Leviim. And some years, instead of giving the Levim, we give to the poor people. So the Chavetz Chaim says that if you want to do the mitzvah of charity in the most beautiful way, you should try to, you should give, try to give 20% like the Rambam and Rav Yosef Karo says. And you should try to give 10% to poor people, right? People that, you know, some people really, you could save their lives. There's an institution in Israel, it's called Efrat. They literally give women that want to do a abortion, they give them money and they convince them to have the kid. Like, it's like you saved the entire world. So 10% to, you know, charity, people that are poor, and stuff like that, and 10% to what? The modern Kohanim. The modern Kohanim is the synagogues, the um, kolels, the yeshivot, Right? That are like the Kohanim and the Levim, because they are, because you have to know, originally God wanted the rabbis to be Kohanim and Levim. Kisifte Kohen, Yishmeru Torah Piu. And just one last thought about this. So we said that out of all the mitzvahs of the Torah that we have to try to do in the best way is what? Sedaka. And what is the best way of doing Sedaka? Giving. 20%. So you may say, Rabbi, they laugh at me. 95, 99% of Jews don't even give 10%. What can I say? I'm a perfectionist. I just want to let you know. Even if one person... So I want to tell you an idea from the Gra and an amazing story about this 20%. So one of my great, great mentors, which I have the unlimited amount of respect for, is Aharav Eliezer ben David, which Baruch Hashem, may God give him 120 years, he always is a big advocate 
to people that he's close to that he really pushes them to give the 20%. And the Gra, I saw an amazing thing. The Gra writes in his book, Rav Chaim Belajan or Keter Rosh, that the Gra guarantees those people that really push themselves. You don't have to give 20%, right? It's 10%. But those people that give 20% of their net profits, after taxes, by the way, the Chida writes, those people that give the, the 20%, the Gra has a guarantee for them. That they're not going to have collateral damage. They're not going to have, get like tickets, you know, especially living in New York or Los Angeles, you know. You run a red light by mistake or you, you do a traffic violation, it's hundreds of dollars. Or even parking tickets now are hundreds of dollars. The GRA has a guarantee. Those people that, even, it's a, it's a challenge to give 20%. What? I made $100,000 this year. I should give $20,000. Obviously, after taxes to Sadaqah, it's a big challenge. But those people that are willing to do it, you should know as a guarantee that those collateral damages, like tickets and other things where your money, and I know somebody that for dozens upon dozens of years has done this, He's never needed a major surgery. He's never needed, he's never gotten a parking ticket. He's never gotten a traffic ticket. So think about it there. It's a type of insurance. And I want to tell you an amazing story that happened in Los Angeles a few months ago. There was a person that he's in the business of bring, importing fabrics, right? Like this beautiful fabric that we have here. And a terrible thing happened to him. He was importing, importing I think, like $100,000, a lot of rolls, right? We know all good Jewish people, they're either doctors, lawyers, uh, mohandes, or they're in the fabric, right? You know, they're in the wholesale. He's, so he's a wholesaler of fabric, and unfortunately, it got stolen, his merchandise, in transit. And it was a lot of money, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of fabric, and he was very, very depressed because he was about to get, uh, go bankrupt. And he owed a lot of people money, you know, for every one bad thing. It's like a domino effect. He couldn't pay the other people. And so he came to Harav Ben David, and Harav Ben David said, do you give 20%? He said, no. He said, I want to, he said, Rabbi, I'm in such a tough situation. He said, please. You know, he did it. After three months, the detectives, the FBI, they found the, the gang that had stolen it. It showed up. So what I'm telling you that when you give the 20%, it saves you from lawsuits and damages. So may Hashem help us to realize, let's just review, that this week's parsha is teaching us five parshas in the Torah are devoted to the temple to very simply teach us that the ultimate temple is in ourselves and it's not an overnight. Just like Jerusalem or Lahabdil Rome, right? wasn't built overnight. To become that great, great, great holy person is a long, long life endeavor. And to build this temple, the modern temples of charity, right? This is Parsha, all the Parshas, the Jews were so generous. The laws of Siddhakah, first of all, the most important mitzvah that we have to do in the best way is what? The Rambam writes in Perek Yud, Siddhakah. That's what brings Mashiach ultimately. And the best way to do it is to give what? 20%. So Shabbat Shalom everybody. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It's called The Light, Maora Torah. Thank you for watching. This is Rabbi David Hekmacha from Maora Torah. And uh, always remember in life, love Torah, live Torah, and may the Torah always protect you. Amen.